This year marks 10 years since we installed our first solar panel array to reduce our electricity bills, get paid for exporting our excess solar and increase the value of our property. And given the price of electricity, this is just as relevant today as it was a decade ago. After running my numbers, we could be looking at a tidy profit of around £17,020.67 in savings and export payments and have added 16,500 to the current value of our home. That's 33,520 pounds 67 pence without even considering inflation. And I'll come back to this at the end of the video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my payback numbers, bust some myths about having solar storage systems and show you how you can turn the problem of high energy bills in your favor. If you've been a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a regular guy who works with my wife for the NHS, has four kids and lives in the wet and cold northeast of England. And I've been making energy related content for the past five years, particularly related to my solar panel and battery journey. In this video, I want to focus on the basics of what I've installed in my home, why and at what cost, how much we've generated, saved and made in export payments, what it's actually like to live with solar panels and battery storage, and are they still worth installing today? Six months after moving into our home, in the summer of 2015, we had our first solar panel array installed. 10 285 watt panels installed on the south southwest facing side of our garage roof. A total of 2.85 kilowatt potential of solar. Our main reason for doing this was to reduce our energy bills. This was, after all, our forever home for at least the next 30 years. We also wanted to do our bit for the planet and reduce our carbon footprint. This setup cost us £4,695 and came with a 25 year warranty for the solar panels. Why not on the main roof, I hear you cry? Well, the few houses on our estate with solar panels all had theirs on their detached garages. And I suppose we felt we had to do the same. We were actually concerned it might reduce the value of our house if we stuck ugly solar panels on the main roof. Ridiculous, right? And I'll come back to how wrong we were on this later on. Fast forward seven years in November 2022, we had more solar installed on the south southwest facing roof of our house. 14 390 watt panels giving us a total of 8.31 kilowatt potential of solar, an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery installed on our house, and an emergency power supply to keep our house powered up if we were to have a power cut. This new additional setup cost us £10,525. What triggered this was our increasing electricity demand, having an electric car, increasing energy prices, our good experience from the first system, and more lucrative export payments on offer. It came with a 10 year battery warranty and 25 year performance warranty on the panels. Why did we have a battery installed? Well, that was simple. Working for the NHS and having young family, we're often out during the day, allowing all that solar to get away from us. We wanted to capture some of that solar in the battery for us to use later on in the day. It also allows us to charge the battery when electricity is cheaper overnight, and then use this during the day instead of drawing on expensive grid electricity. And finally, we seem to be having a storm every other week. The battery backup gives us peace of mind that we can still keep the essential items on if the power goes down, especially with young children. I know what you're thinking, that's great Shan, but how has it performed in the cold, wet northeast of England? How much have you saved and made in export payments? Since we first installed solar in 2015, we've generated a whopping 29,879 kilo hours. That's enough to boil 1,086,509 cups of tea. Don't mind if I do. We've also generated enough solar to have reduced our carbon footprint by a massive 6.63 tonnes. That's the equivalent of offsetting 51 flights from Newcastle to London Heathrow. So what do our returns look like? To date, we have saved 2,146 pounds and 74 pence and been paid 4,912 pounds and 75 pence. That's a total of £7,059.49. We paid off our initial 2015 solar installation last year, and so any savings or export payments we make on this system is now profit. And this array was installed during the time of the feed-in tariff, or FIT scheme, meaning our payments are guaranteed and inflation linked for the next 20 years. Assuming our generation and self-consumption stays the same, Based on energy prices in February 2025 and accounting for inflation to our FIT payments of 2%, that estimated profit could look to be around £4,811.05 over the next 15 years. People often think the FIT was way more beneficial than some of the export tariffs available these days. But then you need to consider that solar panels have become more efficient, cheaper 
and export rates have caught up with some of those latter fit rates as the scheme was ending. With our 2022 solar and battery installation, we're projected to pay that off in around six to seven years. No one knows what's going to happen to energy prices or export tariffs as we don't have a crystal ball. So this is only an estimate. But if prices stay exactly where they are now in February 2025, we could look to earn £22,734.62 over the next 17 years, which after payback of the initial system cost is £12,209.62 profit. Now we know the financial benefits of getting solar panels and battery installation, why don't you find out how much it could cost you through today's video sponsor, Octopus Energy. Octopus Energy provides a range of smart tariffs to help you make the most of your solar and battery installation. All their solar panels come with a 25 year product warranty and other warranties on their batteries and workmanship. You'll get a tailored quote and solar design for your home within a few days of inquiring. And they'll take a £200 advance payment, which is fully refundable until the day before scaffolding installation. Their solar design specialists will work with you to shape the ideal system for your home and you can adapt this to your budget. The installation should take no more than two to four days and only once it's complete and you're happy will the final payment be requested. They even have a range of payment options including 0% interest for the first three years so the upfront cost is no longer a barrier to entry. Their aftercare team will be available by phone seven days a week once your installation is complete. And given that Octopus Energy is now the largest energy provider in the UK, you can be rest assured that they're not going to disappear anytime soon. If you want to get a quote for a solar and or battery install with Octopus, click on this link in the video description box below. Provide the code 90239 to your solar specialist at any point before your final sales agreement is signed and you'll get a limited time offer of £200 compared to the normal £100 off your solar insulation quote. If you do, the channel will get a commission on this sale at no extra cost to you. Thanks to Octopus NG and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now you know what we've had installed, why, and the financial benefits, what's it like living with solar panels and battery storage? We've not really had to change the way we live our lives since installing solar panels and a battery. You can be involved as much or as little as you want. It's easy to monitor its performance, as the app on my phone has a simple dashboard that shows how much solar energy we're producing, how much energy we're using as a household, and the battery charge percentage. If you want to get your geek on, you can install a tablet like this one on your wall in the most energy intensive room in the house. For us, this is the kitchen. The combination of solar panels and a battery works well when combined with a smart tariff. It's easy to set the battery to charge overnight at the cheapest prices so we wake up to a full battery. Solar generation from the panels during the day covers our household electricity use and tops up the battery allowing us to get through to the next cheap period to top up the battery again. Any excess solar generation that can't be used by a house or home battery gets sent back to the grid in exchange for payment. If this all sounds overwhelming, don't forget on the channel I regularly post updates on our solar and battery journey, including the best tariffs to be on. And it's not just the home battery we charge up off peak. We can also schedule our dishwasher, heat pump, tumble dryer, and electric vehicle to charge in the same cheap slot by simply using timers on our appliances. Our solar panels and battery have allowed us to consume around 98% of our electricity in the off peak period, meaning our average price per kilowatt hour has been around 7p. It's a common myth that solar doesn't work in the winter. So far this winter, our solar panels have generated an average of 9.7 kilowatt hours of electricity each day. Given that the typical household in England, Scotland and Wales with medium electricity use, on average use eight kilowatt hours each day, you can see our solar panels will have generated more than enough to cover most people's daily electricity needs. Don't get me wrong, there are days like these where we don't generate very much at all, but these are few and far between, and where having home battery storage complements our solar panels perfectly. Our solar panels and battery require no annual inspection, maintenance or cleaning, but quietly do their job in the background, allowing us to get on with the things that really matter. I've already covered how much we've saved and made in export payments, but the monetary gains don't end there. With the increasing demand for properties with sustainable energy solutions, homes with solar panels and battery storage systems are selling at higher values and faster. 
Solar panels and battery storage systems can increase property prices in several ways, including increasing your home's energy performance certificate or EPC rating. This was ours when we bought our house in 2015. Future-proofing your home's ability to move to a greener future, involving electric cars and heat pumps, which aligns to the UK's shift to a lower carbon future, and allowing your home to generate profit from selling excess solar generation back to the grid, as we've clearly seen. You'll remember I said we were worried about our solar panels making our house look ugly and reducing its value. However, some reports online suggest solar panels can add anywhere between 3 and 14% to the value of your home. Even if we use the most conservative figure of 3%, we could be looking to add at least £16,500 to our property's value based on current valuations. So our decision to spend £15,220 on solar panels and a battery is estimated to return us a tidy profit of around £33,520 in savings and export payments, based on energy prices and highest prices in February 2025. But as we all know, prices tend to go up with inflation. The Bank of England aims for an inflation target of 2%. Over the next 15 years, if we estimate inflation at 2% per year, my electricity savings and house value estimate could even be £18,559.36 and £21,450, respectively. That's a £40,009.36 predicted profit. Our solar battery system has also provided us with some peace of mind, that even if electricity prices rise further, we can reduce our electricity bills and bring in some export payments to provide a buffer in the future. Energy prices are likely to go up with inflation and you can somewhat protect yourself from these price rises and increase the value of your home, all whilst doing your bit for the planet. So, is it worth considering solar panels and a home battery storage system? Absolutely. As the saying goes, the best time was yesterday, the next best time is today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.